At Saturday Market, you're always running into people that you know. And this episode of Rick Dancer TV, you're going to run into a lot of people that we're going to introduce you to. In fact, my wife's going to be here to talk about the Pedal for People race that's coming up in May. We're also going to meet Emma because Emma's the co-host. You have to meet her. And we're going to take you out to the Doris Ranch to show you a brand new trail. We're also going to meet Insanity. Oh, wait. I already told you Emma was going to be here, didn't I? I'm not dead. That sounds like something interesting. We caught up with Emma recently at Doris Ranch. I thought she knew it was a hazelnut farm, not a cattle ranch. Why the boots? Oh, cowboy boots, because we're at the Doris Ranch. Yeah. You thought we were going to have horses, did you? Thought we were gonna have horses, dude. The nice thing about having your own show is when you need some video shot of the new Doris Ranch bike path, what are you doing? Get out of there. Get out of the picture. You can have your wife. Use the GoPro and shoot some video for you. She doesn't mind. She loves to ride her bike. Look, Kathy, look out. Look out. Hey, high five. Nice job. That's pretty Good awesome. ride. So now I yeah. have to give you credit on the show as a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Wife, yeah. photographer. Well, if you don't want to get sued, I think you should. Yeah, I have to give her some credit. If I could just credit, go so. ahead and give yeah, you see, advice. See, this is how we shoot. We use duct tape is good for everything. <laughs> Frankly, Even a GoPro handle when I bring the wrong attachment. Makes me a little nervous he's got duct tape so handy, but today <laughs> yeah. it works. That was Bill the photographer who had the duct tape <laughs> handy. In the back of Bill's car you can find just about anything you need. The beginning of Dateline. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Start packing things away and my wife starts doing this closed closet cleaning thing. That's that's what you do right now. You bring it all to Goodwill and then you get a bunch of scores for very cheap. It's a really good trade-in situation. So we should take them to your house and show them. Well... You want to see Emma cleaning her closets? Yeah, I guess we should do that. Let's do it. Let's do that. Roll it. Bill. These fit last year. Sure they did, Emma. <laughs> Dust them off, put them in a drawer again, and let them sit for another year. I might wear them. No, you won't. Emma, do the right thing. Take them to Goodwill. They'll recycle your jeans, get them to someone who needs them, and put people to work. You change your clothes, Goodwill's business is changing lives. Recently, we interviewed a young man named Joe Boosley and his mother for a video we produced for Women Space. You're looking at the video right there on your screen. Job is the featured speaker at the big Women Space Gala on May the 9th. He's also an up and coming singer songwriter. So we went to Women Space and said, We've got an idea. Let's introduce Job to the community, let him sing some of his music, talk about how he writes it, and you guys sponsor it. And of course, Women Space said, You bet. So, Here's Joe Boosley. Well caught up in. Yeah, I think we're, yeah. How long should I wait? Most of, most of the music is, um, the, the words, everything, it, it's internal that I don't really tell people about. I, I like when people, um, you know, when people interact with the song and they, and they can feel, you know, the song. How many more songs do I need to write? The more you do, the more experiences you have, the more you, you can write. I mean, that's why, that's why straight being a musician and, and uh, not interacting, I mean, just nothing but your, your music or your work, it, it's, it becomes, becomes unhealthy for me. And, and I, tend, I find myself doing that. 
I'll, I'll take a couple months and I'll do nothing but record. And then I find myself not being able to find anything to write about because I'm not interacting. I'm not having the interactions with people and the stuff that, that gives you something to write about. How many more dreams should I dream of you? And I've always waited for the day that I need you. And I would spot you from a mile away. It's that voice that tells you when you get home what you should have said. You know, be it, you know, you're upset about something or you're, you know, you really want to tell that person how much you care, but you don't know how to do it. Um, you go home and you write it and you don't, you don't even realize it, I guess, until, until later. And I can't change, I can't change my face. I saw you just the other day. Imagine that. I think what I what I want the most out of music really is um, just I guess just to play just to be able to be, be able to fill a room with people that are willing to listen. You looked at me and I just stared at you like days ago. That, that's my that's my biggest thing I think uh, you know when people when I'm connecting with with hundreds of people rather than three or four you know <laughs> that kind of thing I think that would be that would be my ultimate goal Wouldn't that be great? And joining us is Peggy Whalen, the executive director of Women's Space, and we got a party coming up. This is the big fundraiser of the year for Women's Space, and you guys are going all out with oh, this yeah. one. Tell me about it. Oh, Rick, we're so excited. It is our third annual black and white gala. We're having a um, Paris theme, Magique Paris. Ooh. I know. We're going to have five. It's going to be so black fancy. And white. It's black and white. It's fancy. We're having it at Emerald Golf and Resort in Cresswell. Which is, re they remodeled and it's absolutely phenomenally it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. We're having um, Shelly James and the Agents of Unity oh, with, nice. playing music for us. And they, um, they're members of Satin Love Orchestra. So they all come together and they're going to be playing music so we can all have a great time later. So it's a dinner. It's an auction. What this is this most beautiful platinum ring with diamonds and this beautiful purple sapphire from Baudet jewelry that they donated for us. Um, we've got dinners and oh, we've got stuff for the Country Music Festival, both of them. By oh, Mark nice. gave us tickets to both. Uh, so it is Friday night, um, May 9th. So it's Mother's Day weekend and we will be celebrating our mothers that night. So. And so they need to go to Women's Space website yes. for more information and I'll put that on the screen. One more thing, this is so important because this really is how you fund the organization yeah, that does so much in our community to end the violence. Yes, it's our major fundraiser of the year and it's a lot of fun. So come out, support us. No. to get a piece of this whole town you know you can't frame everything you see and it feels good to know you're alive and understood even when you say things you don't mean i mean take home a piece of Most of us care a lot more about what we actually put into our bodies and after a good sports workout, one of those sports drinks isn't always the best. In fact, science shows the best thing you can do to help your muscles recover is chocolate milk. You want three carbs to one protein and chocolate milk is perfect and there's nothing better than lock meat chocolate milk. 
The toughest moment of the day is the one right before your body hits the cold water. You didn't have to get up. No one needs to spend an hour swimming laps in a pool at this time of day. The water is like mud as you move it, you pull it, you push it, propelling yourself through it. And when you're finished, your body exhausted, there's only one way to give back what you gave. Lockmead reduced fat or non-fat chocolate milk. Recovery. It doesn't get any better than this. So there's a guy I want to tell you about and he's uh, my barber and come to find out he is also the inspiration for an organization in town that's trying to help people who are addicted to drugs but specifically methamphetamine. Um, his interview was so impacting on us when we heard it that I just, um, I really feel like I want to share some of it with you now. So my name is Justin Arbogast and I'm a recovering meth addict. It was crazy, you know, I would do uh, anything and everything to get get my next you know to have my next fix to have my next you know to get high or whatever it might be um, living on couches from place to place you know people you know I would fall asleep wherever I was whenever I was tired after being up for days I would just crash out here crash out there and then if I didn't have money I would go steal things to you know I mean I was on the grind you know pretty much um, it was horrible. It was. It wasn't good. It wasn't the life that I would suggest anybody to have, or or, or wish on anybody. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It's just not. Um, it's not life. You know. I think many things change. You know. I. I you know. I'm an only child, and growing up, uh, I was really close to my family, and pretty much that just started going away to where I yeah you don't want to be around the ones that you love when you're high and um, because you don't want them to see you how you are like just you know and you feel guilty and you, you just at least for me that's that's how I felt and I knew if I went around them they would know that something was going on it's the devil meth is the devil it's definitely evil it's horrible it's it's it, it terrorizes everything in your life. I mean, it's uh, it's the worst drug you could possibly do, I believe, in my eyes. I don't think people understand how much on a daily on a daily occurrence of how it crosses my mind at least at least every day and how serious that is because it could only take that much to set me off to want to go use again. I could be 10 years down the road and find myself having troubles if I don't, if I don't follow a, a, a strong enough program. That's how addictive this drug is and uh, there's, I just don't think people, people that don't do the drug or have not ever done the drug, they don't understand that. And they never will, you know, until you have experienced what I've experienced or what these other people have experienced, you just don't know. So take it from what I'm telling you to, I mean, it's, every day is a struggle, you know. Life ain't easy, so that's, it, it just makes it that much tougher you definitely need the support. If you don't have support, then that's the problem with, with, with society today. And I feel for a lot of these people, a lot of these people that go in and out of jail all the time and stuff, they don't have families. I had, I, you know, I don't even know how to, to start when some of these people, they go home and their parents are doing dope and, and they're getting high. Well, of course they don't have support. They're never gonna get clean if they don't have the support to get clean. I had all that support and everything and I still chose not to do, you know, the right thing until finally it clicked in, you know. But I just feel for a lot of these people, you know, that don't have the support, don't have clean and sober places to go, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, 
I feel for a lot of people because they don't have families and you know friends and that's why they keep going in and out of prison and jail and doing the same stuff. They don't, you know, I, th I, I don't. I don't think that society takes it near seriously, uh, uh, seriously enough, you know, because we just let justice or whatever, you know, just going in and out of jail, well, yeah, people that have addiction problems do their crime, do their thing, they get caught up, they go into jail, two or three days later, we all know it, they get kicked out, unless it's like something serious, like an assault charge or something, which it's usually not, it's always property crimes with the drug addicts, so they are out in a couple days. Justice is never really served, you know? It's just, it's, it's really crappy. This, this whole system is crappy, and that's another reason why my mom is trying to get this program going, you know? is because she wants to be able to set up a program to where people can go into jail and then they offer that, that to them. So if they really do want to change and they really are tired with their lives, they can come out of there and they can go straight to my mom's program or whatever program it might be and get some help. But they don't really have, they don't really have that, you know? They just kick people out the door and then of course they don't have any place to go or they don't have family to support them, so then they go get high again. It's not a shocker to me. That's just what happens. But they push you out When they shut your mouth So you don't make a scene Still we dance around Like marionettes We have a really cool bike ride we want to tell you about. The Oregon Supported Living Program is sponsoring the bike ride. And this is my wife, Kathy Dancer. Um, she serves on the board of OSLP. And also, you've been going on, I mean, all these trips to try to figure out how this bike ride ro rolls, right? Yes, we kind of added a new one this year. And so we went and checked it out. And it is quite the challenge. There's a 60K and a 40K, and then the 100K and the 100K plus. So the 100K plus, this is for you people who really think that you're like an amazing sporter and you really want to take on a challenge. Cause I think it climbs about 2,000 feet and then it's like just a straight downhill. It's really grueling uphill that just keeps going and going and going. And then once you get uphill, it's awesome. But then the downhill is really challenging too because it's so yeah, straight. Yeah, and it's a fully supported ride, which means that there are many rest stops along the way that have, you know, food to help you fuel back up again and, you know, beverages, things to drink, uh, water. And then um, when you get back to the park, we have a uh, Coburg Pizza is going to provide pizza. We're going to have beer, pop and just have a nice little celebration together. And that's where? At Armitage? At Armitage Park, yes. So where does the money go? Oregon Supported Living Program, which is an agency that serves um, adults with disabilities, um, locally, Eugene Springfield. So why are you involved in this whole thing? My brother um, Chip lives in a group home um, in Sandy Drive and just they are an amazing agency who just really have such a heart and love for their, their clients. Well, it's amazing how it's changed his life since moving here um, and being a part of this agency now. He has just his quality of life and he just has a wonderful life. He has a home that he calls his own and it's fun to just see him out in the community enjoying, um, you know, shopping and, you know, eating and just seeing him out there and he's, his life has completely changed. Um, we're doing this, but which, so which one are we doing? We're doing the 100 plus. See why I work out so much? I have to keep up with her. Doris Ranch is 250 acres of the best kept secret in Springfield and I almost hate telling you about it because I run out here and this is like my own personal little running trail. Although on a nice day, <laughs> there are so many people out here today. Bob Kiefer is a superintendent of Willamette Lane Park and Recreation District. Bob, this is so, the new trail 
is amazing. Tell people about it. Well, it's four miles, a paved path from Doris Ranch all the way to Clearwater. All of it through Doris Park, Doris Ranch, and then along the middle fork of the Willamette, clear to Clearwater. It's uh, been in uh, process since 2005 when we got the first funding for the project and just completed last year. And the, the, the last section was like a mile and a half that opened up in September? Yes, in October really. Uh, it opened, uh, we had a grand opening and uh, we had hundreds of people here. It was just a great joyous occasion as we think about what this will do for our community in the long run for our bicycle system, for recreation, opening up you know, basically three miles of river frontage that nobody's ever really been able to participate in. That's what's so cool about it, because when you're running along there, and you guys put up some of the neatest rock walls and, and this established blacktop and, and cement trail, and it's, it's just phenomenal. Well, you know, it was sort of unique as we tried to stay close to the river and not uh, go too much up on the hillside, and you know, the, the quarry is there, so we had to stay down below. So it required us to put in some significant retaining walls both above and below. You don't see the below ones too much, but it was quite significant uh, to try to get that done. But what a view, uh, what a sense of being out in nature while you're down there. Once you get down in there, you don't even see the, or hear the rest of the community. You're, you feel like you're out there in the country. For cyclists, it's awesome because in that, that, you, know, you can go from Clearwater Park and connect to the Eugene trails and, and all the way around. I mean, you can go for, gosh, what is it? It was 18, you can go for 20, 25 miles. Oh, easy. And the future is even brighter here on the Springfield side in that with, uh, this next year, we're gonna be working toward building the mill race path. So another paved path all along the mill race that'll loop back and connect in with the Middle Fork path, creating an eight mile loop uh, for folks. And most of it'll again along uh, water uh, or in a park setting. Wanna say I'm part of something more There are some of us who seek to open new doors Now is our time Stop fooling yourself Let it out, let it out, let it out Don't be consumed with who they want you to be We all march to a different drummer, and what you think is weird, I may think is normal and vice versa. None of that really matters, but I can tell you one thing. I'm gonna show you something right now that makes anything you see out here look absolutely sane. Watch this workout called Insanity. And today in the soapbox, we haven't done one of these for a while. I guess I haven't been as irritated as usual, but I've got something to talk about. I'm growing intolerant of intolerance. I find it on the left. I find it on the right. I find it right down the middle. In pop culture, in regular culture, I even find it in my faith. And of course, we find it in politics. If I have an opinion that doesn't quite line up with a certain group of people or popular opinion, then all of a sudden I'm labeled as intolerant. Now wait a second. The fact that you would label me intolerant would almost make you intolerant of other opinions. What happened to the Oregon where we like divergent opinions, where we like people who think differently, where they didn't have to always agree with us for us to elect them or respect them. Instead, now we make them out to be the villain and we try to destroy them because they think differently than we do. I think that might be the definition of intolerance. So we, we've got to get our name out. We've got to get people known. We need a promo. I think we need to come up with a concept. Ooh, let's work it out. Let's uh, let's get some ideas down. Okay, so what do you think? Um, well, we're local. 
everything local. Dude. Local, local, like local everything. Okay, okay. I live here. I live here. Okay, there's local. I own Rick Dancer TV. Locally owned. There it is. Oh my God. It's okay, working. So, so I'll teach you how to do the head bobs. Who are their dramatic turns? Yeah, I can show you all that stuff. I'm an expert at it. Okay. Oh, you know what? We should do first, fair, and accurate. I've heard that before. That's too far. That's too you much. You heard that? I think somebody uses that. What I love about coming to Saturday Market is its community. You run into people that you haven't seen for a long time. And this morning, I ran into an old friend named Alan Beck. He used to be my news director, KZI. Just in having that conversation, he reminded me of why I'm doing what I'm doing today. We have to have people in our lives that do that for us once in a while. When I was in the television industry, we always tried to find stories that would attract you to come. Now what we're doing here is we're just doing what we think is the right thing, and you're just choosing to come along with us. And I love that, and I needed to be reminded about that, and I need a community of people around me in order to do that. So that's what this is all about. Where's this gonna end up? We don't know, but we're really glad you're along for the ride, so hold on, because I don't know where this is going. So if you're in the market for a video, Rick Dancer Media Services, we create long format videos, shorter videos, YouTube videos, website videos. What we specialize in is telling your story. And we do it with heart, we do it with passion. Sometimes we do it and make it just a little wacky. It's whatever you want. But give us a call to find out more about our services and what we offer. My phone number is right here on the screen, 541-232-3143. Or go to rickdancer.com or rickdancertv. Okay. People keep complaining about other people's ways. Can we look in the mirror and all see the same face? 